Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shivangi Mishra. Here the top stories we are tracking for you. Indian PM Modi embarks on visit to Uzbekistan to attend SEO summit. Pakistan doctors treat sick flood victims, waterborne diseases climb. And Taliban says Jesh Muhammad Chief Masood Azhar is in Pakistan. And now for all the details. India and other members of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization will discuss energy security at the Regional Security Blocks meeting in Uzbekistan, India's Foreign Secretary Vinay Quatra said on Thursday. The two-day summit will be attended by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Chinese Premier Xi Jinping, Russian President Vladimir Putin and Pakistan Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif among others. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday embarked on a two-day visit to Uzbekistan's Samarkand city for a summit of the regional security group known as the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO. In a statement, he said at the SCO summit, I look forward to exchanging views on topical, regional and international issues. He said a number of decisions on trade, the economy, culture and tourism were expected to be taken at the summit. The SCO's permanent members are China, India, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan and Pakistan. Russia has already confirmed a bilateral meeting between President Putin and Modi, during which they are expected to talk about overall trade as well as sales of Russian fertilizers and mutual food supplies. Russia, the biggest oil producer in the SCO bloc, has also overtaken the United States to emerge as India's fourth largest coal supplier. And the two sides will discuss energy security, India's Foreign Secretary Vinay Quatra said. Prime Minister will hold bilateral meetings with the President of Uzbekistan and some other leaders on the sidelines of the summit. PM's participation in this summit is a reflection of the importance that India attaches to the SCO and its goals. This is also tied to our approach and engagement with the region as a whole. As you are well aware, India hosted the first India-Central Asia Summit earlier this year. PM Modi will also come face to face with Chinese President Xi Jinping on Friday for the first time since deadly border clashes in 2020 freight ties between the Asian rivals. The event comes after Indian and Chinese soldiers this week disengaged at the remote Himalayan border in Ladakh after more than two years of a standoff. Moving on. Police in India's northern Uttar Pradesh on Thursday arrested six people in connection with alleged rape and murder of two minor girls who were found hanging from a tree in Lakhimpur Kheri on Wednesday. A senior police official said a detailed investigation is still pending into the incident. Six men were arrested by police on Thursday in connection with the alleged rape and murder of two girls from a lower caste community who were found hanging from a tree in Lakhimpur Kheri district of India's most populous state of Uttar Pradesh on Wednesday. A detailed investigation is still pending in the incident, senior police official Sanjeev Suman said, adding that from preliminary inquiries, it appeared that the girls, aged 15 and 17, were strangled with a scarf and hung from the tree after they were raped. Family of the minor girls has accused three youths from the neighbouring village in the case. Accused का ये कहना है कि उन लोगों ने ये बात कही कि हमसे शादी करो तो हम लोगों ने इन लोगों ने शिव धो करके उसी चुन्नी से उसका गला कस दिया उसके बाद इन लोगों दो और व्यक्तियों को बुलाया है मौके पे करीमुद्दीन और डीडी सनफ कलीमुद्दीन और आरिफ और छोटे ये दोनों लोग भी वहाँ मौके पे आए इन लोगों ने साक्ष्� Uttar Pradesh Deputy Chief Minister Brijesh Pathak said the government would act to ensure justice for the victims' families. Violence against women, especially those from lower castes, is endemic in India, 
where several still follow an ancient caste system. In news from Pakistan, doctors at makeshift hospitals treating flood victims in Pakistan have said they are seeing more cases of patients suffering from waterborne diseases as well as malaria as water levels show no sign of receding. The death toll due to natural calamity reached nearly 1500 on Thursday. Doctors at makeshift hospitals treating Pakistan's flood evacuees have said they are seeing more cases of patients suffering from waterborne diseases as well as malaria as water levels show no sign of receding, with hundreds living in tents, hygiene and sanitation are also being challenged. A resident at the camp located in the grounds of a school in a hard-hit southern Sindh province said the water being supplied through tankers was not clean but there was little that they could do about this. Since Health Minister Azra Fazal Pechuho said a total of 856,000 patients had been treated since the floods began, mostly at mobile hospitals, because more than 1,200 health facilities were underwater. Conditions including dysentery, diarrhea, malaria, skin diseases, and dengue fever are already widespread, she said. The floods from record monsoon rains and glacier melt in the mountainous north have affected 33 million people across Pakistan and killed over 1,480 washing away homes, roads, railways, livestock and crops in damage estimated at 30 billion US dollars. More on news from Pakistan. In a shocking incident, bodies of three Mutahida Qawmi Movement party workers in Pakistan were found in different parts of Sindh province on Wednesday. MQM has alleged that they were extrajudicial killings as they were reportedly missing for several years after being arrested by paramilitary rangers. The gruesome extrajudicial killings of three Mutahida Qawmi Movement MQM party workers Irfan Basarat Abid Abbasi and Wasim Akhtar in Pakistan have left people in sheer horror as their tortured bodies were recovered from different parts of Sindh province. The three MQM leaders had been reportedly missing for several years after being arrested by paramilitary rangers. Members of MQM Coordination Committee in Washington said the latest incident of extrajudicial killing has once again highlighted constitutional, legal and human rights of the Muhajir community are being seriously violated. MQM, a mainstream political party of the Muhajir community, has dominated in Pakistan's largest city, Karachi, since 1980s. MQM के कारकुनान को झूठे मुकदमात में गिरफ्तार करना, MQM के कारकुनान को लापता करना, MQM के कारकुनान को मावराए अदालत कत्ल करना बंद करो। अगर इन पे कोई भी मुकदमात हैं जो तुम समझते हो, उनको टू अदालत में लाओ। Human Rights Commission of Pakistan condemned the state's failure to protect the right to life and due process of the victims. Pakistan's Interior Minister Rana Sanaullah said an independent investigation will be conducted and assured strict action. The MQM's USA chapter also held a protest in front of the Pakistan High Commission in Washington against the extrajudicial killings and the enforced disappearance of former MQM member of parliament Nisar Panwar. In news from Afghanistan, Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid has dismissed Pakistan's claims of Jaish-e-Mohammed chief Molana Masood Azhar being in Afghanistan. 
and instead said he could be in Pakistan. This comes as Islamabad has been struggling to exit the grey list of the Financial Action Task Force and is believed to have virtually disowned the leadership of the proscribed terror group based on its soil. Taliban spokesperson Zabiullah Mujahid has denied that Mulana Masood Azhar, the chief of terror outfit jaish e mohammed JEM, was in Afghanistan and said he is in fact in Pakistan, local media in Afghanistan reported. This comes as Pakistan has written a letter to Afghanistan for the arrest of Masood Azhar, saying that he is probably present in Afghanistan's Nangarhar or Kandahar areas. Moreover, the spokesperson of the Taliban-led Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Abdul Qahir Balkhi, said that such allegations can affect the relations between Kabul and Islamabad. He added that they also call on all parties to refrain from such allegations, lacking any proof and documentation, and such media allegations can adversely affect bilateral relations. This comes as Pakistan has been struggling to exit the grey list of the Global Terror Financing Watchdog Financial Action Task Force since 2018. The country is hoping to be taken off the list at the October plenary of FATF. However, it has to comply with 34-point task list. Therefore, Islamabad is believed to have virtually disowned the leadership of the proscribed jaish e mohammed terror group. Masood Azhar is blamed by India for being mastermind of the harrowing suicide attack carried out on a convoy of paramilitary CRPF that claimed the lives of 40 Indian security personnel in Pulwama in India's Jammu and Kashmir in 2019. India's National Investigation Agency has also filed a charge sheet against the Pakistan-based chief of the band jaish e mohammed outfit, but neighboring Pakistan has long evaded its responsibility in handing over the terror accused. The UN assistance mission in Afghanistan has said it is gravely concerned by latest accusations of human rights violations in the Panjshir province. This came a day after the Taliban claimed to have killed at least 41 rebel force members and detained over 100 in special operations in the northern province. The UN assistance mission in Afghanistan said on Thursday that it was gravely concerned by latest allegations of serious human rights violations in Panjshir province after the Taliban claimed to have killed at least 41 rebel force members in northern Panjshir this week. Yunama said on Twitter that parties have clear international obligations respect for detainees' rights. It is the monitoring situation and calls for perpetrators of any crimes to be brought to justice. Taliban spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid confirmed that 41 rebel force fighters were killed in the operations in Panjshir. All of their centers have been seized and over 100 have also been arrested, Mujahid said. Reports suggested a video was also circulating on social media that appears to show Taliban fighters executing captured members of the National Resistance Fund, the Nasus group operating mainly out of Panjshir Valley. Located just north of the capital Kabul, Panjshir is one of the smallest of Afghanistan's 34 provinces. It played a critical role in the resistance against Soviet occupation in the 1980s and was a center of resistance against the Taliban when it ruled Afghanistan from 1996 to 2001. A special teaching session was conducted by Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama for his followers from Southeast Asia in India's Dharamshala on Thursday. The Nobel laureate has lived mostly in exile in the hill town since seeking asylum in India in 1959. Tibetan spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama, held a teaching session for followers from Southeast Asia in the hill town of Dharmshala in India's northern Himachal Pradesh state on Thursday. Thousands of his followers from various countries gathered at the main Buddhist temple to hear the Nobel laureate speak on Chandra Kirti, Buddhist scholar entering the middle way. India hosts a large community of Tibetans, including the Dalai Lama. Uh, we've all wake up, woken up so early and we just jumped out of bed to see him. All so excited to gain some um, extreme clever knowledge from him and just become better, more peaceful people. 
The Dalai Lama fled from Lhasa for asylum in India in 1959 after an abortive uprising against Chinese rule. He has since lived mostly in Dharmshala, where his supporters run a small government in exile and advocate Tibet's autonomy by peaceful means. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.